into sprites. Actually, let's go back here. I'm just going to move these just to be clean. We'll move those into our scripts folder. There we go. And we'll go into sprites. Come on. There we go. Okay, so the bullet here is nothing fancy. Could have been a missile or something else, but these are cheap and easy and free. So this is our our bullet. Uh, let's set some things up first. So our bullet, we want to set the pixels per unit to 400, which means it's going to make it small. And then let's set, let's drag this over here. Oh, see, I always forget to click apply. We'll set the sorting layer to foreground. And let's just move this. There we go. Now you can see it's white. Let's actually change that to a green. There we go. Something like that. That's good enough. Scroll in there. Okay, now we need to add a collider for this. So let's add in a circle collider. Again, circle collider 2D. And you can't, oh, there we go. If you scroll way in there, you can see the collider. Oops. That green outline here. Now, if you want to make that smaller or bigger, you can adjust that uh, on the radius and let's undo that because that's fine now we need to add a rigid body 2d to this because we're going to be moving it and let's set the gravity scale to zero we don't want gravity to affect it and that's good enough there and now let's add in the bullet script So we've got our bullet script. All right. Of course, for our bullet, we need a speed variable, and we'll just set that to 10F. See how that feels. Again, we can always change it if it's too slow or too fast. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to use get component. Uh, generic method. Rigid body 2D is the type. Now what this does is it gets the uh, rigid body that is associated with whatever the game object has uh, applied to it. So in this case, uh, the bullet script is applied to our bullet object. So get component is going to get a reference to this rigid body 2D object. Okay. Oops. And then well, once we have the rigid body, and the rigid body is what allows us to interact with the physics engine. So in that case, we're going to set the velocity is equal to new vector 2. We'll set it uh, 0 on the x because we don't want it to go left and right. We only want it to go up and down. And then for the y, we will give it the speed. Okay. So I mentioned earlier, there's <clears throat> lots of different ways of doing different things. This is one of them. So this is a quick and easy way of making an object move on its own, just setting the velocity. Uh, the gravity scale is set to zero, so it will just continue along at the speed we tell it until it hits something, collides with it, or it's destroyed. If we set the gravity scale back to one or 0.5 or whatever, eventually, the velocity would start to fade away, it would slow down, and then it would just stop or probably fall back the other direction, uh, depending on the settings. So in other cases, uh, we could set this bullet, uh, the rigid body, to kinematic, which means it's not going to be affected by the physics engine. Kinematic means that we are going to control how it's moved through code or other methods. But for this case, we just set dynamic. We'll let Unity do all of the heavy lifting for us. And we'll just tell it to set the velocity to whatever the speed of our bullet is, 10F, okay? So now it's moving. And we don't need this update because Unity will take care of that for us.
Okay, so you'll notice here that we've just set up void on collision enter 2D. Now in the other script, uh, where'd it go? Scripts. So if you remember on the ship, we had on trigger enter 2D. Now the difference is because uh, we set the collider on the ship to a trigger. And for the bullet, we did not. Where is that? Yep. Yeah. So we didn't do that. We could have. Um, there's really no reason that uh, we do need or do not need to set it to a trigger. I just wanted to show you guys that there's some differences there. So now we have our collision. And what we want to do is destroy the other game object. Now remember, this is what the other object is that collided with us. So in this case, it's going to be a meteor. Okay, so uh, we're going to get a reference to that meteor's game object, and we want to destroy it so that it's no longer in our game world. Then we're gonna use our game manager, add score, because we've destroyed a meteor, uh, we're going to add one to the score. And then we want to destroy the bullet, so we will use destroy game object. And that's it for that guy. Okay, so now we have our bullet script. We've got the rigid body, we've got colliders, we've got everything set up. We need to be able to reuse this bullet multiple times. And the way that we do that is by creating a prefab. Ah, come on takes a minute for Unity to uh, recompile in the background. I really need a better computer. There we go. Okay. So create a new folder called prefab. Oops. Prefab or prefabs, it doesn't matter. So then what we do is we will take our bullet from our hierarchy and we will drag it into our prefabs folder. And now we have a prefabricated object that we can use multiple times. And so we can just drag them in there manually, do whatever we need to do with them, just like they were normal objects, or we can instantiate them in code like we're actually doing with our uh, fire script. So now that we have a prefab, we don't need them in our hierarchy anymore. So we'll delete those. And now what we wanna do and this is the cool thing, is if you remember our ship control script, we had a public game object bullet prefab. Over here in Unity, because it's public, it knows that it can accept uh, a prefab object. So what we'll do is we'll drag our bullet prefab over to the top of the bullet prefab property on the ship control script and drop it in there. And anytime we run the game or the ship is instantiated, that script is instantiated, our bullet prefab property will be populated with an instance of this bullet object or bullet prefab. So we don't have to try and instantiate anything in code. We don't have to go and uh, try and find the prefab using get component or whatever other framework options there are. We just drag and drop and we're done. So let's run this now. Okay, move back and forth. And there we go. Pew, pew, pew. All right, now we can shoot. And let's go ahead and change our reload time. Let's change that to 0.001. Should be fast enough, right? There we go. That's a lot faster. Now let's change it to one. Ugh, that's so slow. If you notice, we change this reload time to one, but we're in the play mode. If we stop playing, see what happened? Our reload time went back to 0 0.25. So any changes that you make when you're in the play mode will be uh, destroyed when you exit the play mode. So make sure once you tweak all your settings and you're happy with them, you either write them down or You can come up here to the little gear icon, 
copy component. Oops. Let's change this back to one. Actually, let's change this back to 0 0.001 because that's funner. And we'll, we'll copy component. We'll stop. Okay, the settings have uh, reverted. Go back to the gear icon and we'll paste component values. All right, and now we have our 001 on the bullet time or the reload time. Dang it. All right. So now let's set up our enemies. In this case, enemies are the meteors. And again, this is just a sprite sheet. And these are different frames of the animation on the sprite. So we'll come over here to sprite mode. We'll change it to multiple and hit apply over to our sprite editor. Now in this case, it's nice and uniform. So we don't need to do the uh, grid by cell size. We can just do automatic slice. And man, I really wish that was a different color, but now you can see we have nice uniform frames around uh, each of our meteor sprites. Okay, we'll hit apply. And we'll come down here and we can kick out the flyout. And you can see we have each individual uh, meteor frame. And we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to highlight those, drag them up here. Let's create a new animation. And we'll call this meteor. There's that. So we're essentially going to be doing the same thing that we did for the bullet. We're just going to be setting up a rigid body. Uh, we're going to set up, uh, basically just create our prefab. Okay, so first things first, let's change our sorting layer to foreground. Okay, that's important. Otherwise, they'll come up and they won't be visible. Then we'll add a circle collider. Okay, let's actually move this. There we go. Let me zoom in on that. Circle collider. Then we will add a rigid body, 2D. So again, we add a rigid body because we want to be able to move this thing uh, throughout our game. And the same thing here, we are just going to set the gravity scale to zero. And we'll leave everything else alone. So we're good there. And then let's create Meteor Mover Script. All right, set up a private reference to the rigid body, call it uh, RB2D, okay, RB2D equal to get component, rigid body 2D. So again, remember get component tells Unity we want to find the rigid body that's associated with the game object that this script is attached to. Okay, now once we have the reference to that, if we do D2, we'll set the velocity and to the new vector two. Again, zero on the X, we only want the Y. This time we'll use our game manager, instance, and our meteor speed. Oops, forgot an equals. And that's all there is. Okay, so you'll notice that we added a circle collider to the meteor, but we don't have any code in here to actually handle a collision. That's because we don't really need it on the meteor. The only thing that we need is the collider so that Unity can handle all the collisions in the background. But we don't really care what happens because we're already taking care of the two scenarios. When the bullet hits the meteor, the bullet is going to take care of destroying the meteor and the score and all that stuff. And then the other scenario is if the meteor collides with the player, the ship. In that case, the ship script is handling you know, the logic that needs to happen. So it destroys the ship, 
and calls player died. So we don't really need to do anything in the meteor. We just need the uh, collider on there so that Unity can manage the collisions. Okay. So that was pretty simple. So now we need to make our prefab. And let's just rename this here Meteor. All right. And now we have a prefab. We can delete that. And let's actually zoom out. Let's change the name of this to ship. Okay. So something else I want to do real quick is we've got our two backgrounds here, star sky and star sky one. Just want to organize this to make it a little bit better. So let's just call this background, just an empty game object. Now, whenever you create a new empty game object, you want to make sure to zero out the positions. Uh, otherwise, anytime you add children to that game object, the uh, the children will be offset. So they'll be skewed, if that makes sense. So always zero those out. And then we'll just drag star sky and star sky one under background. And now they're children of background and we can collapse it and it just uh, a little bit cleaner. It's a way to organize your uh, your hierarchy. So let's go back to Game Manager, and we need a script to generate the meteors. So let's create. Um, let's see. We'll call it Meteor Spawn. Okay. So now we're going to spawn our meteors. And we're going to set up some public floats here. And this will be the min and max on the delay. So it'll be a random uh, amount of time in between the meteor generation or the meteor spawn. Oops. And in the start, we'll just call spawn and we'll just rename update to spawn. And we'll set up a new vector three, the spawn position. And let's see, we'll set up a new, and the reason we use a vector three, even though we're setting up a vector two, is because a vector three will be required for the instantiate method we're using. So for the vector two on the X, we use random range, uh, negative six to six. Now again, this is just the dimensions of the, the screen space. Um, and I just figured this out by trial and error. So if you have different screen dimensions or different uh, units, you'll need to figure out what works best there. Okay, so what we're doing is we're creating a new vector with a random X, so left and right, and then we're just telling it to start at 6F, which is just above the screen up here, all right? So that's gonna be our random spawn position. And then we use instantiate, uh, meteor, oops, let's see. Forgot to add public game object. We need a reference to the meteor prefab. Give it the spawn position. And we don't want to change the rotation, so we'll just leave it to identity. Okay, so now we have a new meteor that is going to get uh, instantiated and put at this position. And the meteor has its own script, which is gonna handle the movement of that particular meteor. So we don't have to do anything else. But we need to create more than just one meteor. So now we'll use invoke spawn and we'll do another random range. This is min spawn delay and max spawn delay. Okay, so what we're doing here is we are uh, invoking 
the spawn method. Uh, so that if you're familiar with JavaScript, this is kind of like the set timeout function in there. So we can call our spawn method, this guy, uh, after this amount of time. And we're just picking a random amount of time between uh, the min spawn delay and the max spawn delay. Okay, let's save this. And we should be able to run this and see some meteors. No meteors. Oh, that's why. So we have a object null reference exception. So on the game manager, uh, we need to set our prefab. So let's drag our meteor prefab over here and set that reference. There we go. Now let's run and see what happens. Hey, there we go. All right. How about shooting? Oh, shooting works. All right. <laughs> you see the bullets? See that they kind of like veer off once they get hit. There you go. So that's the difference between uh, a collider that is not a trigger and just a normal collider. <laughs> I don't know why that's not destroying. The bullet should be destroying itself. Uh, oh, what's happening here? Okay. Oh, that's fine. This is an exception because we have not set up our text objects yet. But curious why the bullet is not being destroyed. Hmm. It's interesting. Okay. Well, let's move on. I'll figure that out in a minute. Okay. So let's go back. Let's play. Oops, uh, okay. So if you can see over here in the hierarchy, you can see these clones. Oops. Uh oh, come on. There we go. Okay, you just see more and more clones. They're coming up and they're never going away. So after playing this long enough, and actually let's get some bullets going. See the bullets? Now we just got a million bullets. Okay, eventually we're gonna run out of memory. So what we need to do is we need to clean those up. So if you saw the Flappy Bird uh, example, we were using object pooling for the columns. The, po the columns were uh, endlessly generating but we are actually just using a pool of like five or six columns. In this case, we're not doing object pooling. And as you can see, the object list is just growing and growing, and that's bad. So what we need to do is we're gonna create uh, some shredders, all right? So first thing, we will create a new empty game object. We'll set this to zero, zero, and we'll call it shredder. And let's add, we need a box collider for this, box collider 2D. And actually let's set this position to negative 10. Okay, and then we'll just change the size of this box collider. That's good enough. And we can actually move this up if we want. Negative eight, it doesn't really matter. Uh, we just don't want it on screen. And then we will set this to is trigger because you, as you saw with the bullet, uh, when the meteors hit this, the goal of this uh, is to destroy those meteors. Okay, so when they go off screen, they'll hit this trigger and it will destroy it. So if this wasn't a trigger, they'd hit it, bounce off, and just kind of collect there, and that would look really funny. So set that to a trigger. So let's add, add in a script destroy object. Okay, we don't need any of these. What we do need is on trigger, enter, oops, 2D, collider 2D other, spell that right, on trigger, enter, 2D, okay. 
and we just want to destroy other that game object. All right, and that's pretty simple there. So let's save this. And we'll need to duplicate. Oh, come on. Okay, we need to duplicate this because now we need one to handle the bullets. And this one we want to put a little bit further up because the meteors will spawn up here and we don't want them to be destroyed as soon as they spawn. So we'll just move this up a little bit. Let's set that to 10. All right, so that should be good. Let's give it a try. Let's try with our bullets. Okay, so you can watch the hierarchy over here. We've got a bunch of bullets. And now they're all gone. And you can see these meteors getting created, going away. And that's how we're taking care of the object, uh, the object pools. That way we get too many, won't have memory problems. All right, so now we keep getting these uh, errors here for game manager, our game over text. Let's set that up. And actually let's, let's just do some organization here. Zero these out. There we go. Shredders, all right. So now we need to add in the score text and the game over text. So I'll right click, we'll create a new UI object, text. Okay, so now we've got text. Uh, but what you can see here is this, this thing, this is the canvas, and that's not what we want. So we have to make some adjustments here. So on the canvas, what we'll do is we'll change the render mode to screen space camera. All right, and then we need to give it the reference to the main camera. So we'll drag our main camera over to the render camera and there we go, it fixed it. It's kind of annoying, but it is what it is. And then for the sorting layer, set that to UI. So that's on top of everything. All right, now let's set up our score text. Let's actually call this score text. Score is a zero. Change it to let's say 20. Make it white so that we can see it. And you can kind of see it here. So let's actually change the position. What we want to do uh, when you're working with the UI is use these anchors, these anchor points. So up here in the rect transform, click on your anchor presets here, and you can hold down Alt. And we'll click on the upper left hand corner and now it's uh, anchored to the upper left hand corner and because it's text you can change the alignments if you want it centered uh, whatever in this case uh, sometimes you need to change the overflows so I generally just set those to overflow and uh, that takes care of any potential issues uh, when the text is uh, changing during the gameplay okay so that was easy Let's duplicate this and we'll change this to game over text. And we'll set this centered or anchored to the center. Use center justification, overflow is good. Change this to red and let's make this bigger. Let's make it 35. All right, now you can see that, nice. But we want score to be available always, but not game over. So for game over, we'll come up here and uncheck it so that it's not active. Because when the ship collides with the meteor, we're going to then enable the game text so that it's shown or displayed. Okay, so now that we have our UI elements, now we need to go set those in our game manager script. Score text and game over text. So score text, drag it over, game over. Okay. Let's clear these. Oops. 
hit play. Let's test our score. All right, now you can see our scores changing up there in the top. Yeah, let's actually, you can kind of tell, but the, uh, the meteors are speeding up. Let's just hit a couple more. And for some reason, now the bullets are, now they're disappearing. <laughs> I don't know what the, I don't know what happened. That was pretty funny. Okay, come on. Eventually, these things will start speeding up quite a bit. Ah, they're actually slowing down. Okay. That means there's an issue in the script. Uh, let's see, game manager. Probably because it needs to be negative. There we go. Oh, come on. This actually changes to 50, just so you can see it. All right, very exciting. It's like the funnest game ever, right? All right, now you can kind of see they're speeding up. So at some point, these things will be going so fast that it'll be almost impossible to to stay alive. So you can probably add in some logic that uh, limits the maximum speed. So now they're going pretty pretty quick. There we go. Okay, so we got hit, and now we've got our game over. Our score is up here, keeping track, and our ship has disappeared. We are good to go. So now if I hit fire, game starts over. You can see the meteors, they are slow again, and we can just start the game over. So that's it. Not much to this game. I mean, it's an endless, uh, Endless Runner, uh, just with the space theme. Again, it's pretty basic, but what we learned here is how to create objects, uh, how to manage those, clean them up. Uh, when you're working with uh, an Endless Runner like this, you're just creating multiple objects over and over again. Showed you setting up the prefabs and a couple other things. So, you know, I like to show and teach these concepts by doing. Uh, we can spend, you know, five or six hours going through each of the options. Uh, what everything does, but that's really boring. You're going to forget and you'll have to relearn it anyways. So going through and building these games, even though they're ugly and, you know, they're kind of not fun, uh, you, you learn by doing and it's a lot funner and you retain more of the information by actually building these out. So let me show you. Let's see. So one thing I want to point out here is uh, if you're used to just control S, control S will save your scene but it doesn't save the project. So there's save scenes and save projects. So make sure you do both uh, every now and then. Okay, so let's close this. Uh, just reopen Unity. Okay. Come on. There we go. All right, so this is a, I guess I can't even say a variation of uh, the game that we just made because it's actually a lot different, uh, but similar concept. This is not gonna be an endless scroller. This is actually uh, going to have levels and bosses and extra lives and all that kinds of stuff. Um, this is not done. I'm hoping to have this done by Thursday and then we'll do a, a session on building this out. I just went out and got some uh, assets. I actually bought these assets from gameart2d.com, I think it is. Uh, and then I made this text uh, using cooltext.com, kind of neat. So these are UI buttons. Uh, you can select your ship if you want. And there's nothing in there yet, just I was setting up prefabs and getting the animations and everything correct. So this would be a much funner game. Obviously it looks way better than the other one. Uh, but, you know, as you're building these out, I'm not very good at art, uh, but that seems to hold me back from moving forward. So 
uh, in my particular scenario, I have to go and pay for uh, assets. Hopefully that's not the case for you. If you have some kind of uh, you know creative talents, good for you. Uh, let's see what else. So in this, we'll be uh, looking at different scenes. So this is a scene here. This is the first, uh, the main scene, the ship selection screen or the main menu. And then uh, it switches over to the, where is it? To the actual gameplay scene and it carries information over. So we'll be looking at that stuff. Uh, more animations. Actually, that's something that I didn't show you was the animations. Let me show you some animations. Actually, let's stop this. We'll go to gameplay. Okay, so I've got this ship here and this ship. Uh, it's got this animated flame. So you can see that flame. So if you look in the animation, and this object is actually composed of two objects. So we've got the ship, and then I had this animation in here separate. So this is called pulse. So on the pulse, it's got these frames. Uh, one, two, three, there's five frames. And you can control how slow or fast these frames are actually played uh, in the animation tab. So under samples, right now I've got it set to 24. So let's set it to six. And then if we go back to the scene, you can see it's playing really, really slow. Come back in here and let's change it to 60. And now you can see it's going super fast. All right, so that's something I didn't show you on the on the other project, but if you wanted to change um, how slow or fast the meteor animation uh, was, uh, I know the default animation is, I think it's a little slow. It could be sped up. Uh, that's how you would do it. And you can change that on your prefabs. So anything that you can do up here in your hierarchy, you can do on your prefabs and it'll store those settings. Okay, uh, so hopefully I'll have this done. Uh, we'll see about uh, another session on Thursday. So that's it for now.